Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in Him. It's such a joy to be back to worship the Lord with the family of God. How I miss the fellowship of the believers. When we see each other and interact with each other, truly there's a great joy of belonging and the warmth of love and care surrounds us. I want to welcome all those who are watching online with a warm welcome from New Calvary Church. We praise God for this opportunity to come together and worship the Lord because Christ is the center of our worship. Actor Kevin Beckon remembers the time when his six-year-old son saw his movie called Footloose. It is a musical drama movie. His son came back and he told Kevin, Hey, Dad, you know that thing in the movie where you swing from the rafters of the building? That is really cool. How did you do that, Dad? His dad, Kevin, said, Well, I did not do that part. It was a stuntman. His son was a little bit perplexed. He asked, What is a stuntman? Kevin said, that is someone who dresses like me and does things that I cannot do. Oh, the boy replied and walked out of the room looking a little confused. A little later, the son came back and told, Dad, you know the thing in the movie where you spin around the gym bar and land on your feet? That was cool too. How did you do that? Kevin said, well... I did not do that. It was a gymnast. What? A gymnast? Kevin said, that is a guy who dresses in my clothes and does things that I cannot do. There was silence from Kevin's son. Then he asked in a concerned voice, Dad, what did you do? Kevin timidly replied, but I got all the glory. Friends, that's what Christ did for us. He dressed in our clothes. He took on the form of human being and did what we could not do. He paid the price for our sin on the cross. And now those who look at him and have relationship with him, we stand forgiven. So how can we neglect such a great salvation? We did nothing. Christ did everything for you and me. Hallelujah. Sadly, many of the believers are drifting from the faith because we have not understood what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary and the eternal significance of our salvation. Last week, my twin sister spoke on drifting away from this great salvation. And she said, our faith life is almost in a straight line, which may become zero soon, resulting in spiritual death. Of course, there are many things that are happening around us that drift us away from faith in God and make us to neglect such a great salvation in Christ Jesus. One of the main reasons we drift away from God is our eyes and our minds are fixed on things that are temporary, not on eternal things. Instead of fixing our mind on Christ, who is sufficient, supreme and sovereign, we drift away by the worries of life and pressures of the world. If only we understood the supremacy and the sufficiency of Christ, Truly, we will not neglect such a great salvation that costed God, his own son, our Lord Jesus Christ. This great salvation is found only in Christ Jesus. And he has given this salvation as a gift by the grace of God. There is no Jesus plus. The salvation we have in Jesus is full and complete. Friends, we are studying the book of Hebrews and God has been ministering to us every week. In the first chapter of Hebrews, we were urged to pay attention to Christ because he is fully God. 
in a position higher than the angels. In chapter 2, we urge to pay attention to Christ because he is fully human. For a little while, he took a position a little lower than the angels. Only in Christ Jesus we see both the divinity and the humanity dwelling together. The book of Hebrews is all about our Lord Jesus Christ. The book talks about the superiority, the sufficiency, the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. Only when we understand both the humanity and the divinity of Jesus and pay attention to Christ and his glorious salvation we will be able to believe in the superiority, the sufficiency, the sovereignty of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even before we dive into our present text, I would like to read Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. So it reminds us of the supremacy of the sovereign Lord Jesus Christ who has given us such a glorious salvation. Let me read it for you. Long ago, at many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the head of all things, through whom also he created the world. Verse 3, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is much excellent than theirs. The entire book of Hebrews hinges on this passage. As we go through the book of Hebrews, I think we should come back to this particular text as often as we can. As this is our reference point, as it is a symphony or the masterpiece of the entire book. The writer of the book is helping his readers to see that Christ is as much better than the angels. Therefore, they needed to pay much closer attention to Jesus and should not neglect such a great salvation. This context helps us to understand our today's text. Let me read today's text, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 to 9. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 to 9. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. Verse 9. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. This morning, I would like to share with you why we should not neglect such a great salvation. From this passage that we just read, we are encouraged to live our life with the eternal perspective of our glorious salvation. Our life is not just for few years that we live on this earth. Our life is eternal. Our salvation is eternal. When we read in John 3.16, a famous verse, we all know it by heart, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Our life on earth may have challenges, pain, sorrow, difficulties, but that's not our destiny. We are only sojourners in this world. We, the children of God, 
we have a glorious destiny where we will live with the sovereign lord forever the life we live here may be 70 to 80 years but we will live with the lord forever that is the result of the glorious salvation the salvation we have in christ jesus is not only for this present life but for the life eternal it is a lifelong relationship with christ that goes beyond this present earthly life so why we should not reflect such a glorious salvation i want to share with you four things we should not neglect such a glorious salvation because of god's intended design because of man's intentional disobedience because of christ inevitable death because of jesus incomparable deliverance the passage that read helps us to understand god's intended or original design man's intentional disobedience christ inevitable death and jesus incomparable deliverance so we should never neglect such a glorious salvation let us quickly unpack the passage verse 5 starts with for it was not to angels that god subjected the world to come the world to come is the final era of god's redemptive purpose it is the age of the ending of the old covenants and the beginning of the new covenant that is found in christ jesus as jesus is the final and complete revelation of god as we have seen in chapter 1 Firstly we should not neglect such a great salvation because of God's intended or original design. We see that in verses 6 to 8. It reads like this. It has been testified somewhere what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. Putting everything in subjection under his feet now in putting everything in subjection to him he left nothing outside his control these three verses are the reflection of psalm 8 that shows us the ideal man psalm 8 is about man as originally created by god it reveals god's intended design for humanity When God created man Adam and Eve he created them for a little while lesser than the angel you read in Genesis 1:26 to 30 you see that God perfectly created man in his own image and in his own likeness verse 26 says then God said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground verse 27 so god created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them was 28 god blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it rule over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground then god said i give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it they will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground everything that has the breath of life in it i give every green plant for food and it was so it's very clear from the above text that god's intended original design of man was to be like him so in his own image and in his own likeness god created both male and female not only the intended design of god was to be like him but also he provided for all their needs abundantly 
from the beginning god has been sovereign and sufficient for man man was god's crown of creation god set man over all earthly creation and told him to have dominion over his creation the writer of hebrews he adds to the note in verse 8 for in that he put all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him we should understand that man's rule over god's creation was on earthly dominion exercise under the sovereignty of god adam and eve were ruler over creation but they were not autonomous let me repeat adam and eve were ruler over creation but they were not autonomous they were under the sovereign rule of god god is always the owner we are the rulers or managers of his creation we are called to live and rule because of god's intended design for us to be like him and rule over his creation we cannot neglect such a great salvation friends do we realize the imprint of god's likeness is upon us we belong to god we are god's masterpiece we are created to rule over the creation therefore we cannot neglect such a great salvation because of god's intended design for us secondly we cannot neglect such a great salvation because of man's intentional disobedience verse 8 says for in that he put all subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we do not yet see all things put under him even though the intended design of god for man was to be like him and rule over his creation was said very clearly says but we do not yet see all things put under him the original design of man has obviously fallen short because of man's intentional disobedience God clearly gave him instruction not to eat the fruit of the tree but deliberately and intentionally he disobeyed because he wanted autonomy over his life instead of being the ruler over the creation of God man lost his freedom by disobeying God and he is now in chains he is slave to sin he is slave to satan he is slave to the world We see the story of man's disobedience in Genesis chapter 3. Man was given dominion over everything. God put all things in subjection under man and God left nothing that is not put under him. But when you see the word but you will realize the whole thing said prayer is going to be changed completely. God told man very clearly not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but they failed they chose autonomy over submission ever since man wants to be autonomous it's all about me mine and myself we want to be in control when we have lost control we fight over many things not only with god but with our fellow human beings actually speaking we are out of control when we want to be independent and have our own way we have lost our control man has never been in perfect submission to god man failed to exercise god's assigned role to reflect and reveal god because he sinned he continues to sin throughout history he sins today we sin today as a result the world is in a mess it's moving from trauma to trauma we have these so much of natural disasters unheard of diseases perverse and relentless crime that abounds every day 
we see rebellion than submission man is out of control we are out of control in ephesians 2 paul writes about this condition so beautifully what was the effect of our intentional disobedience we see in ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3 and you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince of the power of the air the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind man's intentional disobedience is clearly portrayed here we were dead in trespasses and sins we walked according to the course of this world we followed the prince of the power of the air we carried out the desires of the body and the mind by nature we became children of wrath it was an expensive disobedience we gave our dominion to satan and we became slaves to sin and satan it was an expensive disobedience we gave our dominion to satan and became slave to sin and satan we started to live according to the worldly patterns fulfilling the desires of our flesh and ruled by satan it was a very sad condition that we ended up with we lost our likeness of god and we lost our dominion given by god we are out of control we exchange the righteousness of god with the unrighteousness we were hopeless powerless that was the result of our intentional disobedience but the beauty of god's love was he did not leave us dead in our trespasses and sins because he loved us so much as we were his original design he sent his only begotten son to die for us Jesus came down to our level. He stepped into humanity and became man. He wore our clothes and did all that we could not do. We were dead, but he made us alive by dying on the cross. He came down to pull us up, lift us up from the mess that we were in. Paul writes it so beautifully in Ephesians 2 verse 4. Again you will see the word but but god being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in christ jesus hallelujah This is such a great and glorious salvation. Why we cannot neglect such a great salvation? In spite of our intentional disobedience, God came after us. He loved us while we were still sinners. I am reminded of the good shepherd that goes after the one sheep that went away from him. He leaves the 99 and goes for that one missing sheep. he finds the sheep and gladly brings it back what no one could do jesus did for us we were lost but he found us we were dead but he gave us life we were hopeless but he entered into our dark and hopeless life and gave us love and light friends are we still intentionally disobedient to god's word neglecting such a great salvation do we know god pursued after us even when we were away from him are we intentionally hiding from him as adam and eve but he is going to come after you he is going to come after me are we intentionally neglecting such a great salvation when no one loved us god loved us when no one cared for us god cared for us when no one wanted us he came after us 
how can we neglect such a great salvation even today christ is waiting to receive you to shower his love upon you thirdly why we should not neglect such a great salvation because of christ inevitable death look with me verse 9 but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels namely jesus crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of god he might taste death for everyone again in verse 9 it starts with but but we see jesus after observing the reality of man's intentional disobedience that caused man death and separation from god jesus who was made lower than the angels came down took upon the form of man through the suffering of death he gave us life and life eternal jesus laid aside the robes of glory put on our clothes as a human came to the world to live like us but without sin he lived his life perfectly never once violating the terms of the covenant yet he died how can this be explained a sinless man put on the cross the suffering of death It is this very inevitable death that made Jesus to carry the sins of the whole world upon him brought the incomparable deliverance to the whole mankind Jesus came into the world to die for us while we were still sinners he died for us death was inevitable for Jesus to save us by dying he delivered us No one will die for a sinful man. He took our place, he wore our clothes. What we could not do, Jesus did it for us. He died for us while we were yet sinners. That is what the great salvation is all about. It's about Jesus. It's about the cross. It is about his suffering. It is about his death and it is about his resurrection. That's a great salvation. He had to shed his precious blood on the cross. He died as a criminal but conquered death. Because he died, we live victoriously today. Because he died, there is no penalty of sin. He bore all the punishment upon himself. He tasted death for everyone of the world. This sinless man Jesus suffering death for sinful man is called grace that is grace indeed unmerited favor we did not deserve grace but god gave us his amazing grace freely he costed him but not us we did not do anything but we got the glory and honor christ death is a finished work and no more sacrifice once for all he was sacrificed as a ransom for the whole humanity hallelujah how can we neglect such a great salvation we cannot because of the inevitable death of christ on our behalf do we realize the depth of god's love and christ's sacrifice on the cross Do we know that there is no longer any penalty of sin because Christ paid it all? Finally, why we should not neglect such a great salvation because Jesus is the incomparable deliverer. We have an incomparable deliverer in Jesus. The name Jesus appears first time in the book of Hebrews. in chapter 2 was 9 it means the one who saves us from all of our sins according to matthew 121 although the created man failed to live out the intended design of god jesus who is so much better than angels brought life back to man brought man back to the original design of god 
Jesus was the perfect man. He was a real God man. When the first Adam failed, the last Adam succeeded. When all the hope is lost, Jesus brought living hope to all the mankind. Jesus is the supreme head of the new creation. This glory and honor of Christ as we have seen is what God will remake us to be. This is the glorious gospel of hope in this passage. The power of sin and death has been nullified. The humanity will be led to the full realization of their intended glory, the glorious destiny. Man is certainly not as he should be. But the author of Hebrew says, in Christ person, we see him as he can be. And through Christ's work, we see him as he will be. Jesus, the incomparable deliverer. Everyone who is in Christ will be crowned with honor and glory. God graciously recreates sinners. Apart from Christ Jesus, life is futile. Continue to hold fast your allegiance to God. We can endure joyfully our present trials when we know the glorious salvation we have in Christ Jesus. By faith, we should see Jesus and marvel at what he did for us and what we are now in him. He left the splendor of heaven, not only took upon the human flesh, but also went to the cross on our behalf. We have an incomparable deliverer. Friends, Christ Jesus still delivers people from sin, sickness, troubles, pain, challenges, deaths. He cannot be compared to any deliverer or deliverance which are very temporal. There is no rival for Jesus. He is full and complete. Famous Charles Wesley wrote the hymn, Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? The hymn portrays our condition and the incomparable deliverance we have in Christ Jesus, who is supreme, sufficient and sovereign. Paul, when he wrote Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Paul daily saw Jesus who endured the cross on his behalf. He saw himself in Christ so that all the benefits of Christ's death applied to him. This is how we should live each day. Jesus is our incomparable deliverer. Our deliverance comes from the crowned Savior, Jesus, who tasted death for everyone and conquered death. We feel weak, despised, or insignificant in this evil world. Take courage. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. It doesn't really matter what the world thinks of you. What matter is what God thinks of you. If you have trusted Christ as the one who bore all your sins on the cross, then God has imputed his righteousness on you. You are purified from your sins because of Jesus, our incomparable deliverer. Friends, then why we should not neglect such a great and glorious salvation? Because of God's intended design of making us like him and giving us the dominion. Because of man's intentional disobedience that separated us from God. Because of Christ's inevitable death that gave us life and brought us back to God. Because of Jesus' incomparable deliverance for us from sin, from Satan, from death. How can we neglect such a glorious salvation? Trust Christ with your life who became lower to lift you up. God loved you. Christ gave his life for you and me. He lifted us up with Christ Jesus to be seated with Christ in heavenly realms. Wow! 
when i know that god's intentional design of creating me is not temporal but eternal to live with him forever how will we neglect such a great and glorious salvation that is eternal will i not live my life with eternal perspectives by fixing my eyes and my minds on jesus who is the supreme the sufficient and the sovereign lord i want to end this with a beautiful narration by pastor max lucardo when he shared he said on a trip to the united kingdom our family visited a castle in the center of the garden was a maze row after row of shoulder high hedges one dead end leading to another by successfully navigating the maze you discovered the door to a tall tower in the center of the garden max lucardo says i just couldn't figure out which way to go then suddenly i heard a voice hey dad back up turn right i looked up and saw my daughter standing on the tower do you think i trusted her but i listened to her it was my daughter calling from the tower who went before me turning all the twist and turns her vantage point was better than mine she was above the maze so she could see what i could not see friends don't you think we should do the same with god god is higher than the heavens psalmist is saying in psalm 113:4 the lord is high above all nations doesn't he want us to get us out and bring us home of course he does he certainly wants to give us direction he wants us to look up to him in all the situation and listen to him so that he can lead us through this maze victoriously friends trust your life in the hands of god look up to him listen to him as you walk through the maze of life there are turns and twists and seemingly dead ends but the incomparable deliverer has already gone through every twist and turns of life and gloriously won sin death and satan he is now seated on the right hand of god interceding for each one of us the good news is his eyes are always upon you and me he has not left you alone even for a moment god who said i am with you always i will never leave you nor forsake you he is true he is sovereign he is sufficient he is supreme god keeps talking to us and helping us how to handle every turn and twist that come on our way so that we can reach successfully the glorious destiny of being with him forever and ever friends because i am god's design because i am forgiven because i am delivered because i have a glorious destiny why will i neglect such a glorious salvation of the sovereign lord my savior my god jesus God bless you all.